Tina Mary for this podcast. This is a podcast where I try to demystify a lot of mathematics here because Tina Mary is an mathematical uh, mathematics undergrad student and now she has completed her data science masters. So now in this has not of- not completed. <laughs> I am in my fourth semester. Keep this masters master student. And now in her journey into the data science, she has found a lot of canonical problem statement which can really give you some insights. Or she has also been a tutor in QMath, which also will be able to give you a lot of insights on how to learn mathematics. Thus, I present you this podcast with Tina Mary, who is a math expert for me in this podcast today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Usha. Yeah, yeah, Tina. Let's get started with the questions. So my yes. question was... And one thing before yes. that, yeah. I had seen most of your podcasts, like around four or five videos of your podcasts, and I find them very interesting. Thank you so much for that. that. Thank you so much for that. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. my teachers actually told me this. A lot of my friends actually told me this. And a lot of the people, when I give them the questions, they say me this. And thank you so much for that. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. It means You're doing awesome. an amazing job at this. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, there has been a lot of things that math has been given, giving out equations for programming mm-hmm. dependent on the equations today, pseudocode, mm-hmm. algorithms, everything. You know, mm-hmm. as a mathematical undergrad student now studying masters in data science and now getting inside this masters and also doing this data science as your daily work. What do you feel about mathematics today? I think like uh, mathematics has been a subject that has been around for a very long time. So everything that we do, the, mathematics is something that is there in our daily lives every day. And it most of the time it goes unnoticed because if, if, when we are uh, maybe when we are making a dosha or something, uh, dosha is a colloquial slang, when we are making dosa, we, we make it in terms of circles. So everything that uh, that goes through our lives every day has some kind of mathematics in it. And uh, today, when I talk about mathematics in the field that I'm currently working in, it has a very huge role because everything that we do, the modeling process, uh, the statistical part of uh, the data analysis, everything involves mathematics. So today I feel math, mathematics is a very, very relevant subject. And uh, when I was teaching, when I was being uh, teaching kids at QMath, uh, I teach a very small grade students. So it is, uh, that is something that requires a lot of patience. And uh, when I started teaching them, even I sometimes I started questioning myself because multiplication is something that we can understand very quickly. But when we are explaining that same concept to a kid, I was like awestruck, how will I demystify or how will I explain multiplication in terms of very simple terms? That was something that I was confused about. Then I I thought of, uh, you know, teaching multiplication as repeated addition. So in such ways, maths is always a complex mathematics is always connected to a much more simpler math. And once we understand the simpler part of mathematics, it is very uh, easy in order to understand the complex part. So I feel the max today, as per your question, involves a lot of complex uh, mathematics like linear algebra, calculus, and everything goes down to the basic um, addition, multiplication, integration is basically summing up most of the things that we know. So just like that, I think the mathematics, all the complex mathematics today has something to do with um, all the simpler concepts that we already learned. So that's my answer for the question. No, when you told about dosa, you know, it's Mm -hmm. a simple way of understanding how enthusiastic were you in being that enthusiastic and <laughs> learning mathematics all all throughout your life you know yeah when you have chosen mathematics as an undergrad yes you you need to have a lot of insights on what multiplication is addition is division is even sure. if you take any competitive exams yes for sure you want to solve aptitude oh. problem yes for sure you need mathematics definitely but i always had this question you know from my young age can there be a day without mathematics and can there be 
a problem which can be only solved with mathematics what's your view on it i think uh, the the first question can there be a day without mathematics i think that is particularly very much an impossible thing as far as i'm concerned people might, might not notice the mathematics in every day because that can be a case where people can say there is no mathematics in my day like everything goes on normal i do the uh, random mundane stuff that i do every day but if we look into everything even the screen is a rectangle i have a bottle which is a cylinder everything that i see oh, in my philosophy and, <laughs> yeah it is so weird and at the same time so, such an awestruck as well as an amazing idea that everything that you have in your life has a relation to the mathematical concepts that we learn in our small age and all these small concepts build up in order to become a very strong complex uh, topic and if at all we are going to the complex topic uh, at the beginning itself like right away entering into the complex topic it might seem very much hard and that might that might be a reason why uh, different people find math to be a bit difficult but at the same time if we are going from the bottom towards that and growing our way towards that concept i feel math is a very interesting subject and uh, whenever i learn math there is there has been a simple uh, there has been a very interesting way that i used to follow that was uh, i learn a concept about something i when i was learning integration uh, i that, that was uh, introduced by isaac newton Uh, I, I should I say uh, introduced by because uh, Isaac Newton in principle uh, I I don't quite remember the name of the uh, uh, yeah, article yeah, in which he yeah. published that uh, but uh, Newton had uh, talked about integration and uh, every time I learn a concept I try to go back into the history and uh, see how that uh, how that concept came into being what who was uh, Euclid. Uh, a lot of interesting theories have been built around all the euclidean theorems especially the konigsberg bridge problem that is something that is an unsolvable uh, that was an unsolvable uh, problem for the people uh, back then and there has been a very interesting story behind the konigsberg bridge problem and like that there are a lot of interesting theories which can help you remember the concept because when you hear about a particular concept in maths if you can relate it to something that uh, that was in the history we will remember the history anyway the histories are stories and our human brain is very much wired in order to remember stories so uh, if if you can connect each of the concepts with the history and uh, if you can see something identify something interesting in any complex topic that you are learning then that would be something that can help you uh, help you help the concept stay in your mind for much longer so that was one thing that i really i really um, try to follow when i was trying uh, when i was trying to study math and i have to say the graduate math uh, like the three years of mathematics that i learned in my undergraduate the first two years were uh, very much practical we had other subjects too we had a lot of mathematics like integration differentiation which we we had to work out different problems but the third year i have to say it it was a lot of things were learning like uh, theoretical concepts like uh, real analysis uh, uh, graph theory graph theory we had to like understand graph theory is a very important subject in mathematics and there are a lot of stories ex- especially this uh, konigsberg bridge problem that i studied that first in graph theory and uh, like all these concepts were all these subjects were very theoretical for me and uh, i i started finding it very boring and uh, the third year of my undergraduate life was kind of boring because most of the maths that i'm learning were all theoretical but i tried to uh, like this was the strategy that i used in order to make it more interesting like uh, like mapping the subject concept that i'm learning today to the uh, you know history and then understanding it so it was it was a lot of fun doing that yeah you know that's a pretty big way of justifying how much of math is involved in every day's life it's not it's not it's, that it's not i'm not saying your answer was big but it's a lot and lot of intuitions that have been inside you mm-hmm. for a quite a long time i think <laughs> you're bursting out everything in this podcast i think i can demystify a lot of things from you 
<laughs> and i see all your talks before yeah i feel that you were like okay i want to say something more but yeah i'm i'm restricted to the time don't worry this <laughs> podcast has yeah. no time limits you can do whatever you want how much ever yeah. you want you know, thank you you know when i when i actually looked at all your defi talks and also other other videos which you had actually been part of you mm-hmm. know discuss algorithm you know there is oh a star algorithm <laughs> yes i have been following yeah. a lot of your content you know it's not about the content or anything because i was looking for the insights but mm-hmm. today that was actually probability you know i actually didn't want to actually explore much about it but yet after seeing the way you were talking in defi talk and also your discussion i was like okay i need to demystify something else that was according to me a probability so mm-hmm. now i actually wanted to ask you this one question probability in terms of development what is it all about today you know there is probability involved like tensor flow probability there is like mm-hmm. uh, packages which are coming for uh, encryption and decryption based on probabilities you know probabilities mm-hmm. everywhere though it's mm-hmm. just the section union all the signing of theorems which just come in but yeah. yet it's a huge way of understanding you know event understanding is something which is phenomenal these days but like what's your view mm-hmm. on probability these days in terms of development mhm i i think that is a, actually a very good question most of the time when we learn a concept and uh, the reason why people find um, you know studying the math behind different concepts very uh, like the most of the time some people find that uh, we don't have to study the math because we already have the libraries existing that do the job for you then why take the effort in order to study that when you already can uh, you know just uh, like implement that using a single line of code that is like one reason why most of the people find the math studying the math behind all the concepts are useless but uh, when i'm talking about probability uh, the bayesian theorem a lot of probability concept as you said understanding the probability of an event happening everything has they are very much very simple concepts and these simple concepts sum up to be the big subject as we know the bayesian the bayesian statistics and uh, bayesian statistics has a lot of applications in today's world and in order to understand a probability i think you should start from the very bottom like understanding the subsets understanding the sample understanding what intersection is understanding like when you should use intersection and when you should use um, union and all these small concepts are very important when you come when you start studying about probability and distributions and uh, yes probability and distributions distribution is something that is very much connected with the uh, probability and i did write a blog on a normal distribution introduction to normal distribution a probability dist on a probability dist pdf and cdf and uh, under that was written uh, by that was written in integrated mlai which is a blog post which is owned by tom iles uh, he is an amazing gentleman he is uh, he is my mentor and i've grown much more closer to him he has mentored me uh to like since we started writing since i started writing in his blog i i i am not really good in coding but uh he understands that he's a lead, lead data scientist uh at ul prospector and uh, even when i started writing code he helped he helped me in order to write all those small codes like even when he he understood that i was i was not really good in coding and uh, he was very patient and he did not even judge me based on the knowledge that i had he was very patient with me he helped me write all the codes for them and uh, he l l i i if i start talking about tom it will take the whole podcast but uh, he was an amazing person and uh, whenever i try to study this this con- this is a concept that i learned from him that whenever i try to study a concept that being like that i wrote a uh, blog on um, normal distribution and when i was writing the post i was trying to code Uh, like how to uh, get the pdf the probability distribution function of a particular data i was trying to code it from scratch whenever we are learning a concept we will know if we have learned the concept or not when if we are able to successfully code that particular concept from scratch 
so if only if we know the concept or only if we know the uh, complete theory only then we will be able to code it from scratch without any errors and i had made to be very frank i had made a lot of errors and tom was the one who helped me like this is how you write a function that involves this probability he was very patient enough to explain all those things to me so every time you have uh, every time you have something that is related to probability it can it can be something that will give you a very uh, you know quality insight because the probability of an event happening in future that is something that can be very much helpful for any company so what is the probability of um, this product being successful in the company then when we are looking at that uh, you know probability of that such cases then we will we will have conditional probability that uh, what is the probability of the success of this particular product in this company given that these are the constraints you know given that only this much amount of um, this much amount of space can be used for this particular product or uh, only this much uh, you know retailers are selling this product given all these constraints what is the probability of a company having a success if this product is being sell so such concepts of probability these these are concepts that can be easily solved using the base theorem of probability and uh, when we are learning these concepts it seems like why like th this is same as uh, like trying to learn sin uh, like tan theta equal to sin theta by cos theta we, we don't know why that is used but most of the time people will be like why are we learning sin theta and cos theta people don't understand what is the application of sin theta cos theta just like that when we are learning probability probabilistic concepts or bayes theorem most of the time people won't understand what is the real life application but when they start uh, solving real life problems only then they will be able to understand what is the real impact of these concepts in the real world so i feel that probability has a probability is a concept that has a very huge impact in today's world and uh, the, a pop, proper understanding of probability and how to use and when to use each of the probability distributions or when to use all the concepts that we learn is a very key factor that can help uh, solve huge amount of real world problems today yeah you know when you are talking about probability it's way more amount of uh... event which we are talking about you know it's not mm -hmm. that one event of tossing a coin or uh, probably yeah. getting a die number in a dice you are talking in terms of exactly. business which is happening in billions of dollars that's actually there mm -hmm. but yeah but people who are doing mba right they don't care mm -hmm. about your probability because they know how to add value <laughs> to a simple machine if you just say exactly. this earphone is like is for like Hundred rupee probably. I don't know. It it was free with Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it was free with Samsung. So that, it doesn't mean to me anything. But tomorrow, hmm. if you give the same product to an uh, management guy, he is first mm -hmm. going to think of the statistics part of it. Let me just say the mean exactly. life of a more mode of every aspect which he has taken into consideration. Mode of the sales, mean of the sales, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of the lecturer whom I did the podcast with his name is vinay ms mm -hmm. he actually gave a very brief understanding of what statistics is he just told like it's just an insight of what data can be mm -hmm. you know because we are we are a, i am an ec student talking about data science computer architecture actually makes sense because i have to work in hardware but he as mm -hmm. a coreley and cs guy he he has no requirement for mathematics at all Mm -hmm. no that's yeah. what i feel you know what's actual statistics to you as a person who has grounded 3 years of a life in mathematics with different concepts but yet how is it different from different concepts to now we are considering okay. statistics good very good question so when we are considering about statistics the one factor that helps a lot in data a uh, data analysis not i'm not saying data science alone data analysis particularly is statistics uh, let me help you understand that with an example uh, when we are when we are trying to understand uh, we have a concept called stationarity uh, a stationarity uh, concept a stationarity a stationarity concept in uh, time series 
and uh, that is basically a time series data uh, it can be it is a set of data points which is collected over a time and uh, when we are when we are looking or looking to model a time series data it is very important that the data is stationary the stationary uh, the concept of stationarity basically means that there should not be any trend component that is uh, an increasing trend sometimes the uh, like the data points can go increasing over time or sometimes it can go decreasing over time all these things can happen or it, it can have a seasonality component seasonality components means only during a particular time it is seeing a hike and then it goes down again and when in the next year when the same time comes it it is again getting a hike this is a seasonality component so all these components in time series has to be removed in order to make the data stationary so uh, when we check for station like once we check uh, when we have a time series data the first thing that we do is check for stationarity either we can plot a graph or we can use a statistical test called augmented dickey fuller test so that is uh, one that is uh, a test that is used to test if the data is stationary or not and you if that test shows that the data is not stationary uh, is not stationary we move on to remove the non stationary components like trend and seasonality so this is a particular application of statistics in data science and time series forecasting so just like this and when we talk just like this there are a lot of statistical tests which help to prove different a uh, different which helps us give an idea of the kind of data that we have and i'm not i am not just saying that big uh, tests are the ma main part of statistics even the mean median mode the measures of central tendency the measures of dispersion all these measures are extremely important in order to identify what kind of data that you have for each of the variables when you try to understand the main median mode you get kind of get the distribution of the data whether it is following a normal distribution or uh, if the if the data that you have has uh, different ranges then uh, then we do, we won't be able to do proper modeling if the you know the ranges of the data are very much different from each other so that is as all these insights it statistics is basically the tool with which you can get a lot of insights from the data so all these insights can be uh, uh, can be achieved using these very simple statistical concepts so statistics is something which is a very core subject when it comes to data science or data analysis and uh, it helps a uh, statistics helps to get the idea of what kind of data that you have at hand so that's it yeah you know you know there is lot of edge that you have towards machine learning because when you see mm -hmm. lot of activation function it's all from the wavelet functions it's all mm -hmm. wavelet functions only yeah you know yeah. mathematics has really been indulged in our life for quite a while now you know let it be doctor making sure that the patient gets the right amount of anesthesia mm -hmm. to to oh, our <laughs> our engineering problem every day whether it's fourier transform or z transform anything i'm yeah. not more into communication but i'm more into a kind of hardware so yeah um i'm i'm not sure whether i can really get you this question but yet i would just want to ask you this one question what is that actual concept which is still influencing you in your life any mm. concept let it be integral differentials or else partial integrals the most influential one i just want you to ask answer that one uh, mm, the most influential concept uh, what i've learned till yet, till now i think i should say that would be the probabilistic concept prob the concept of probability because every time that is something that we do in our lives even without us knowing so i'll give you an instance uh, when we are when i'm when my mom has told when my uh, if at all she has she has gone to work and she has told me in order to do this particular job before she comes back so most of the time i'll be surfing in my mobile phone and uh, when, when the time comes like when she is about to return back home i would be calculating what this time what is uh, what is the probability that i would be able to complete the this particular task within this much time frame 
so uh, and if i feel that i wouldn't be able to complete the first thing that i'll do i will i will just go finish that work and then come back to uh, serve my mobile phone again but um, these small concepts that uh, that i've learned because tossing a die the probability of getting uh, you know three red balls from a bag of lot of uh, different colored balls all these concepts these might seem very layman or these might seem very much these are, are these concepts that we would need any time but uh, when you see the real real world problems that we are, that are being solved using these concepts it would be mind blowing and i was mind blown by the amount of uh, the amount of problems that i shared with you a bit a bit earlier the business problem i told you about that is just one instance and uh, so such co the this concept of probability was something that helped me you know identify the beauty of maths and integral is also something that i really like but because integrating has uh, actually helped me even the even the cons the blog that i'm writing in that the name of the blog is integrated ml ai and uh, that is a very beautiful concept the concept of integration you know uh, when we have mentoring sessions in uh, you know that the, that is organized by tom and uh, in that session we just talk about one tom or anyone any uh, any other person starts with just one topic and we he just gives an introduction he or she gives an introduction and the rest of the members who are involved in the uh, involved in the session they would just put in their views and whenever we add in more views you know whenever we add in different views of different persons to that one particular topic it adds a lot of value so that is one thing that i found very much interesting about integration integrating adds value that is something that i really uh, you know find it very interesting through the blog that i was writing with tom yeah when i heard that you are more into kind of an mathematics and the data science through your mm -hmm. blogs you know uh, there are a lot of ways in which people are people and their brain is accessible you know in a form mm -hmm. of blog in a form of podcast what we are doing now in a form of some tutoring videos or anything you know i feel mathematics is a psychological game you know if you don't have the presence of mind even though you are an expert in the field you actually tend to make a lot of mistakes you know i feel it's a psychological game all about you know what do you feel about this statement i'm saying that mathematics is a psychological game Mm, i think uh, not mathematics alone like anything that you do in life anything uh, be doc mathematics is uh, one very important concept because if you don't have the presence of mind you will not be able to come to the final solution that you are looking for and the final solution you can have different approaches to reach the final solution the the most important thing is what is the easiest and what is the best way in order to optimal way in order to reach the solution so when if you are you know not very much interested in mathematics or something uh, then you will be able to then you will be just able to trying to just find one solution so that you can reach the final uh, final answer but the thing is whenever you don't have the presence of mind you would not be very much uh, inspired in order to get to the final solution and that is not alone there for mathematics mathematics is uh, i think a bit more um, a on the safer side with that i think the medical field especially for the doctors and as especially involved in surgeries the surgeons the um, most of the doctors i feel they have this field of um, you know the psychological uh, area the i i feel that they are very much uh, you know in more need of that presence of mind the psychology so i feel more than mathematics mathematics is a subject that needs a lot uh, that is a psychological subject in a bit but at the same time i feel there are other areas uh, in life or other fields which require more of that yeah you know i agree with you i agree with you because a lot of doctors these days they are just studying to just earn money mm -hmm. 
it's not about whether the drug goes in mg or <laughs> grams it's not their matter at all because you are supposed to be healthy according to a patient that means if a patient just breathes it's enough for him whether he is psychologically stable whether he is good enough to be that guy you know there are people where they don't have the presence of mind to work in data science they want to explore themselves mm-hmm. play guitar do something yet they can't really understand this process because mitigating money is one such big deal today you know whether yeah. you solve a billion dollar problem whether you are worth billion dollar or else have you worked to the dime of the billion dollar nobody cares you have a billion because everybody dreams of a billion dollars they yeah, need to have that, that 10 zeros in their account <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter one google i need to have one google in my <laughs> it's stupidity because that is yeah it's stupidity because i feel that you know you can get models out you can get the thrill of solving this problem statement but yet you you are not born for it it doesn't matter because your talent is not genetically influenced but yeah. yet you know there are a lot of ways in which genetics has modeled all these uh, equations in which uh, you know there are edx talks where the mathematician has actually for, formulated the equations for the variation in the hormonic level a uh, diagnosis which can be done faster and also kestonin you know there are new dra- new kind of enzymes or else new type of hormones which are being analyzed these days a lot of things mm-hmm. have been just demystified with some mathematical equations these days there are yeah. mathematical biologists there are a lot of other guys <laughs> you know when you come to me as a data scientist i actually want to ask you this one question where how do you define a model in terms of performance and the process let it be an h5 file which is being just thrown out from a neural network or else mm-hmm. it can just be some xg boost algorithm which you have implemented how are you going to explain me that one thing in terms of mathematics you know i just need a mathematical insight i don't want the equations now i don't want the equations <laughs> and uh, to be very frank i quite don't remember the mathematical equations involved in xg boost and uh, the whenever i try to explain like uh, a few days back on 22nd of uh, december it was national mathematics day and i did give a talk on exploring data science and the scope of data science uh, in the present world and uh, i was talking to my juniors in uh, the undergrad uh, college that i in the college that i did my undergraduation so they were from a purely maths background and trying to explain data science to them i needed to explain it in very layman terms because if we are if we are going to say like we are going into the model training process or if we are going to we are going to clean the data if these are the type of terminologies that we are using when we are trying to explain uh, you know a concept uh, to a person who has not known that before the person will find that we are talking uh, garbage because they most of the most of the things that we say won't be able won't they won't be able to connect with the things that we are trying to say or trying to convey to them so whenever we talk about something it is very important in order to understand the audience that we are talking to so when i framed when i framed the presentation uh, that was going to present to them i tried to uh, use very less jargon and i tried explaining machine learning to them i tried explaining neural networks to a to a set of students who had never never even heard about these words so it was a kind of a challenge in order to explain the uh, all those in very layman terms i tried to use an i tried to use examples like when i talked about neural networks i was talking about the neurons in the brain from which they were originally uh, you know they derived inspiration from the neurons in the brain and um, all the neural networks were created using that so i tried to explain uh, the input is just like the dendrites in the neuron and uh, so the child uh, so the students that i were talking to were able to connect with the uh, topic that i was trying to tell them and they were i used visualizations i used gifs like live gifs and uh, they were able to see the picture at of the i used a simple uh, ann uh, a simple artificial neural network and uh, i tried to ex- i tried to relate that uh, ann 
with the neuron and try to explain what each of those parts mean. We have the hidden layer just like the axon and then we have the output layer which are the axon terminals. When I was talking to them in that terms, they were able to relate. So, so whenever we are talking to an, uh, whenever we are talking to an audience, it is very, very important in order to make, make sure that you are talking in an appropriate manner so that they will understand. There is no point in trying to show off uh, saying all those uh, jargon words that the audience don't understand. So every time we are trying to deliver something, it should be very, like if you are talking to a professional community, I can say XG boost algorithm. I, I, I had used XG boost algorithm in order to uh, optimize this particular solution. Uh, then if we are saying that to them, it will be very much uh, what I say. It will be very I'm much appropriate. I'm so I apologize for interrupting. I'm also hmm? after you complete this part, I just want to to give an insight on models which you have built and how can you explain it in terms of mathematics that's what i really want to... no no you can continue that because it actually covers that actual part of it how do you oh. define a model yes that was there but i didn't mm -hmm. i didn't have this insight in my mind for different audience oh. but yes you are um, i apologize for that i apologize mm -hmm. for that but you can give me like general way of how do you define a model not just for a layman, but yeah, you know, probably an expert was for two two months of deep learning uh, job. Mm -hmm. That means he has been a machine learning engineer okay. for two months. He has solved some problem. Kind of. How do you explain? Sorry for that. I apologize for that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not a, not an issue. So when I'm trying to define a model to a person who has some basic knowledge, I would always uh, try if if the knowledge is very basic. I would try to start from a model that is not very complex. I would start from uh, maybe linear regression. It is something that can be e like le easily understood if a person has a proper knowledge, a basic knowledge of statistics and the regression is something that can be, it has a lot of uh, things to be covered when we are learning regression. I'm not saying it is absolutely simple. We have a lot of assumptions. We have uh, the why we are using all those assumptions like uh, normality, uh, like heteroscedasticity, all these things are involved. But whenever I'm trying to explain what a model is, I would always explain in terms of uh, a simple model and then connecting it to a particular model. So if I'm, uh, for example, if I'm trying to explain an ensemble model. Maybe I'm talking about random forest. The first thing that I would do would I would be explaining decision trees. So how will we build a decision tree? What are what is information gain? What is entropy? And how will we select the root uh, root node? And all these concepts are very important in order to understand a decision tree. So once that concept is uh, properly understood, and I'm not going into the equations part because even I don't remember what the equations involve. Nobody can remember because we also take the <laughs> reference of the papers in Arxiv. If possible, mm -hmm. try to manipulate something there, just do it. <laughs> exactly. We all do that. We all do that. Yeah. So whenever I'm trying to explain a big concept, I would always go from the bottom. I would explain what as in the example, how will we build a decision tree and what is the what is the depth of the decision tree and once that is explained uh, i will start explaining the ensemble model part of it maybe like uh, we we are building an ensemble model they are called the, the individual uh, decision trees are trained on the data set that we have we split the data set into different um, uh, smaller data set uh, which was called uh, bootstrapping the method is called bootstrapping and uh, we we built um, the de decision tree uh, we built a different decision tree on each of those bo bootstrap model and uh, then we merge them all together and there are different uh, different methods in order to merge the decision trees together like um, bagging boosting all these different techniques so th th that is actually a lot of information when we are saying all of this together at to a person it would be very we cannot expect them in order to understand everything so that is why when in in most of the posts that I write on LinkedIn, I try to just uh, like uh, try to demystify or 
explain in very layman terms what a particular uh, topic is. Uh, one time I explain about uh, what is Ensemble model, and then in the next post I talk about what is bootstrapping, and the next post I talk about what is uh, maybe what is uh, how do you build an Ensemble model, and then go to diff what are different kinds of uh, methods in order to build Ensemble model. So all these kinds of things when I'm trying to explain a model to them. I would start from the base, explain what a particular, uh, what and all factors are involved in a particular model, and then go uh, go forward to explain the bigger part, bigger picture to them. So I think that is something that I would uh, do when I'm trying to explain any model, be it be it KNN two, the um, K nearest neighbor or KNN. The KNN is a model that I okay. I think I think you have to cut it here because no no uh, no, no. you can you can you can you can you can you can. Uh, the thing is that is something that I can in uh, you know say for the next. No question no no, no no no. It it can be anything you know. It can be you can explain it. I I can edit it. I can do anything with that. Don't worry. You okay. Can, you can sure. express, speak your heart. Speak your heart off. Don't worry. Okay sure and uh, okay so that being said, uh, I I'll stop at uh, ensemble model. Okay, I, I just lost my flow there. Uh, okay, uh, so the ensemble model. So whenever that is what I wanted to say, that is whenever I try explaining a model, I try to, I whenever whatever I try to explain to someone, I try to explain it in very layman terms. Because whenever you talk in terms of jargon, the amount of people that will be able to understand the concept that you are saying will be very narrow. But whenever you try to make the post that or the blog that you are writing very layman or very general, that is when the amount of uh, people who can, you know, connect with what you're writing will be more. So whatever you're trying to explain, whatever you are trying to write, always try to write as far as possible in layman terms so that more people will be able to understand from what you wanted to communicate to them. Yeah, I know. You know, this is... This is how the passion of any data scientist has to be. It's not about whether you are solving problem statement in machine learning, okay, medical image, bioinformatics. There are a lot of things which is in picture today. Neuroscience is there. Neuroimaging is there. You know, there are there are mathematics involved in getting the image also. There is Fourier transform, DFT, all these things True. are transformed instead of hardware and mm -hmm. software, which we we folks like EC, CS folks, I'm actually a kind of CS and an EC combined. More on the software also, I can talk more on the hardware also, but as a mathematician, when I look at how you have the look and feel of hyperparameters can be to you, what is an hyperparameter to you as a mathematician who is an undergrad student in mathematician, but at a master's now, what can hyperparameters mean to you altogether? I think um, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I think I'd, I'm not, uh, I won't be able to optimally answer that. Fine, fine, uh, it's fine, it's absolutely uh, hyper fine. Uh, you know, because I wanted, uh, you know, I can say about parameters, but when I say about hyperparameters, I always get confused because like the last day I was looking at um, at an article that was saying the difference between parameters in a particular uh, particular um, data set and hyperparameters. And I, I got confused reading that. And uh, I was like, whenever I'm talking to some person and I, I won't say anything that I'm con really confused about. So I don't want to give a very wrong idea through okay. what I'm parameters trying to say. Are good. Parameters, we are good with the parameters also. Okay, um, so so how would you frame the question again? Could you please? Yeah, yeah, I can frame that. What do you feel about parameters these days as a mathematician? Hmm. Okay, when we are saying about parameters, uh, we we have a data set. When we have a data set, we have uh, a lot of variables involved, and um, uh, and oh god, one minute. <laughs> um, I just I'm 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 got, I'm getting really confused with parameters and hyperparameters. Um, parameters importance. I'll talk about the importance of parameters. Yep. And you then can. go about. I'll then go you can, about. You can, you can. You can. Selecting. Okay. Okay. Fine. <laughs> now I get the. Now I get the idea. So okay. 
So when I'm, when we are talking about parameters in a data set, we have a lot of variables in a particular data set and uh, not all of them will be very important. So each of the variables that we have are, can be considered as a parameter in order to in order to give a particular information about the um, you know the dependent variable that we are trying to solve. Suppose if we are taking the Boston data set, we have to uh, predict the price of a particular area in Boston. So All that is actually open source data. Yes, yes, open source data. And uh, the thing is, we have to predict the price of a particular area with regard to the number of rooms that are there uh, in that uh, that particular uh, house or uh, we the number of rooms the area in which it is located the amount uh, the all the you know localities located near them all these are factors all these are parameters that is affecting the price so there are a lot of parameters that don't provide any value in order to predict the price price as a dependent variable so all these variables like the number of rooms the locality where it is uh, situated all these are called the variables or all these are the parameters that are the or they are called the independent variables that will affect the dependent variable which is the price of the uh, the the area so when we are talking in such terms the parameters are extremely important there are a certain parameters that are highly important like maybe the number of rooms in the house that is present that is something that is really important that can affect the price of the you know the place the that the other house that we are trying to buy and uh, or there might be some irrelevant variables that does not quite affect what the price will be and our aim whenever we are trying to build a model whenever a reg this is a regression problem so whenever we are trying to build a regression problem uh, when we have to choose the most important parameters there are, there will be a lot of garbage in the data set that you get i'm not uh, the, since this is a very open source data set the amount uh, this is this is a very refined and very proper data set but there can be certain variables in in the real world data there can be certain variables that do not provide much value to the uh, you know variable that we are trying to predict so we have to find uh, the uh, variables or the parameters that are very important in order to solve the in order to uh, you know in order to understand the variable that we are trying to predict and uh, we can do that by using different feature selection methods uh, there are uh, feature selection feature extraction methods like pca pca is something that i'm learning you know recently and uh, it is uh, 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 it is an algorithm that is the most favorite of i have to say of uh, my mentor tom and uh, you know he he when I, when whenever i ask him any doubts about pca he he goes on talking about whenever i or anyone else ask him a doubt about a uh, pca he he can go on talking for hours about that so that is a, that is actually an amazing method for feature reduction so uh, as i was saying coming back to the parameters i can say that there are some parameters who which will add value to the kind of uh, analysis or kind of a problem that you're trying to solve it is very important in order to understand which parameters are important to help you uh, solve the uh, solve the problem that uh, or the variable that you're trying to predict and choose those parameters and then try to solve them because as the number of variables in the model that you're trying to build increases it the complexity of the model increases the amount of time that you're taking to uh, you know train the model increases and it just increases the complexity there might the so if you have the right amount of variables you know, if you have the saturated amount of variables in your model that would be uh, an optimized and a very a very good model yeah, so that's you know. yeah. You are so passionate. I know that. <laughs> I can get to know that. I can get to know because it's not about it's not about saying something else. Because I might ask you about hyperparameters. You might talk start talking about parameters here. Hyperparameters are nothing. They are just that parameters which runs that algorithm. But parameters are something which data set has to be answered somehow or mm -hmm. the other. You know, mm -hmm. I know that you have passion. from your talk that's for sure you know a lot of passion filled and a lot of truth i'm not joking you have a lot of truth because you you don't know i said you just said you don't know that 
because these generations of whether it it's mine whether it's yours you know you're not truthful to the profession you know people like that you know i appreciate your truth your appreciate your confidence i appreciate your passion which you have you know thank you thank you very much i can only appreciate but i just want some insights on why data sets why data science all of the sudden when you had huge <laughs> grip in this subject called as mathematics and now you could have had solved lot of problem statements in math also but yet why yeah. data science all of the sudden in masters that is a very good question and i have to say data science is the subject that i jumped into just without thinking much that was a one week time frame within which i started i had plans when i was doing my bachelor's i had plans to do a batch uh, my masters in statistics and uh, data science was a subject that i did not at all know about and uh, one of my friends said that uh, she is going to do actuarial science at christ so i was like okay that is uh, i have heard about christ that is a really uh, nice university that is a really nice college so i i just searched for different uh, subjects for masters that they are offering there and i saw this data science and i was like what is this data science i have not heard about it before so i started researching about what data science is and i understood that there is something that i can do after max you know the requirements that they were asking for were either computer max and statistics and uh, if we have uh, either like at least two of these then you can apply for that and it's like yeah i have max i have stats i i have no idea about computers and i can learn that in future and uh, so i i had max and stats so i just directly jumped into data science without thinking much i i did you know quite ask my teachers who taught me uh, like what was their opinion about me going to data science and uh, few of them said that that is actually uh, you know statistics is a broader area and uh, data science is a much narrow down area and um, you know the thing is when you're learning data science uh, they, they were really concerned about me because i did not have much knowledge about computers i mean whenever i, I say computer i mean programming languages database management i, I had particularly zero idea about that and about maths and stats i was quite okay with that so i was like a oh, you know ho jayega you know i i'll be able to learn i you know we were learning till now like what is the uh, like big you know big thing i can learn the computer so that was my attitude then when i started learning programming languages i started finding it you know the python was the first uh, language that i learned in my first semester and uh, since i knew max it helped me a lot in order to you know code the logic properly and even now i I'm, i'm not saying i'm i'm very good in coding even now i'm kind of uh, you know make a lot of logical problems when i'm coding but semantic still the, error semantic mm, error yeah and and even i i make indentation problems a lot because i have no idea where uh, like why why do why do why, like if i start an if statement now why do i have to make it uh, you know pull, push it to the uh, you know next indent these are something uh, a few things that i had to learn through uh, like starting from my masters and um, so when i jumped into data science uh, i had this confidence that i will be able to learn uh, programming languages and which i'm still learning by the way and uh, the uh, sql and database management database management is something that i need to learn a lot and the cloud uh, the cloud computing is again a subject that i want to learn and i had a subject in my third semester but i need more information on that i need to learn a lot because a lot of new updates are coming every day and it is a race against APIs, time in order apis are racing these days apis yes. are racing I I I I literally don't know how to keep track of all the things that are being updated every day, and uh, so so like that. So whenever I, I had this, the data science was a very a quick change of plans for me, and uh, I I feel blessed. I feel blessed by God Almighty. So because I I am very happy that I made the transition. I made that decision from moving from uh, statistics to data science. uh you know not doing msc in statistics i'm not saying that masters in statistics is bad <laughs> i'm just saying that i'm just more glad that i did data science uh, as uh, in my masters because it helped me understand it, all the the best part is you know why i love this subject 
the best part is i am able to apply what i learned in my undergraduate undergraduate degree because most of the things that you learn in maths the you know the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis i had literally no idea where i am going to use that and then comes data science where we have a particular data and then we are making the assumption that uh, this uh, this this data has um, you know i am uh, at a 5% level of significance i am going to make the assumption that this data will uh, will have um, maybe the person the pers uh, just cut this out okay don't worry don't okay. worry i can edit it i can edit it. yeah okay. so okay so we about the null and the alternate hypothesis you know when i'm having this uh, data when i came into data science i started understanding that at 5% level of significance we are making this assumption that um, you know this particular data set will follow this particular uh, statement or the hypothesis and then i try to solve uh, i use statistical tests in order to solve that and uh, then i'm going to reject the null hypothesis and that is when i got when the, you know when this bulb started uh, you know uh, you know shining in my head that okay so this is where you actually use these null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis so i have to say i have to say data science provided value to the undergraduate maths that i learned yeah. that is the best thing that is the best thing that i was able to do in data science you know understand the application where each of the concepts that i learned will apply that that made me very happy yeah you know being an happy student i can see your smile man you know it's not about you know generally we when we see our teachers we just fake the smile you know somehow or the other mm-hmm. you know because education system is broken that's for sure some way or the other it's broken some way or the other it's broken don't comment about it i know it can go for a long yeah, time yeah <laughs> exactly it can go education on for just, me. education system is broken these days but yet there are quality engineers coming out by their own mm-hmm. assault whether you score a 35% and you just pass out of the college but yet you have your own shot in life because life has to move on like i always say this when i'm enjoying somewhere you know i always say this if you stop breathing i'll stop enjoying that's it because we have mm-hmm. to we have to make sure that our happiness is far fetched today that's sure. what i yeah. always because we are supposed to be happy but like like i have been talking to a lot of data scientists i have been talking to a lot of ceos of the startup i have also been talking to a lot of people who have worked in startup like what do you feel like about the happiness of what data scientists have today that satisfaction in the work and what is making the life of a data scientist much more easier today that's what i want to comment about that's what i want you to comment about okay so i was i am i i just started out and i feel that uh, this i just uh, started with an analysis in a data set that my com- that company that i'm working in right now just gave me and uh, you know whenever we are trying to it, it is everything is about that aha moment uh you know that is what you know sometimes you know you listen to music you try to solve a particular you know you try to find trends in a particular data set uh, you do uh, all the stuff in python or sometimes you do it in excel i do it in both and uh, when you're trying to find all these insights sometimes you just identify a particular trend in a data set which was not very obvious and uh, i just identified that once and i was i was jumping with joy because that is something that uh, i that i could not notice it even after looking for two or three days at the same data set so all the, this is uh, this is my kind of happiness and it can differ depending on the uh, kind of uh, you know each the kind of work that each of the data scientists are doing so i personally feel that uh, the the job that you are doing is very rewarding be it in terms of the insights that you are getting or be it in terms of the salary that you get so i i kind of feel i kind of feel that the the job is a uh, job is very very much rewarding not only uh, i i have to say the happiness that it doesn't it doesn't last when it is uh, you alone who is celebrating 
And when you share it with someone or when you share it with your colleague who is working in your team, the same person will be very much excited that you found out, you found that out. So the, the happiness, the environment that you're working in matters a lot. And, uh, you know, being part of such an amazing data science community over LinkedIn, like you, even you, uh, you had approached me regarding this uh, podcast and I saw all the videos that you are doing and I was just so amazed by the commitment that you, you just put in, you know, I, I saw, I saw the first video that you did. Uh, when you uh, when you contacted me in December, like in the um, you know first week of December, and the next time I st- I opened the, your YouTube uh, channel, there were like almost over eight or nine videos. When when you first approached me, you had just one video, and when the that second time opening, brother. oh, okay. First with my okay. brother, he is a firmware engineer. Why I started mm-hmm. out was look like, okay, there is happiness involved in every field. But yet, I, I wanted to demystify what says happiness. Because to me, mm-hmm. you know, I have a passion in uh, photography. I also do a lot of photography. Amazing. You know, I Amazing. also do a lot of... My LinkedIn post has been appreciated by all the people who take the views. But I don't... I personally say them don't like it because I, I'm not behind your likes. I'm, I, uh, even I share my podcast to people. But I have stopped sharing my podcast because I just want them to realize my value all of a sudden. It's not about they realizing it. It's because of my mm-hmm. satisfaction. I do my work because of my satisfaction. Mm-hmm. That's what I always wanted. Yes, that is very true. Because uh, the the um, the definition of happiness for every person is a different. And when it comes to uh, working in a data science field, I feel that uh, apart from the job that you are doing, being connected with over a large uh, a, a large community of data scientists gives you a lot of joy because every time maybe it may be like sometimes your job is frustrating maybe you're working on a particular data set and it doesn't give you any value it doesn't give you any insight and you get so frustrated and uh, you get into a community and you just share that with some other colleague data scientist who is working in another company or something and they say that oh my god I have also faced the same issue and you will be like, oh my God, I, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not alone in this. All the data scientists, like not all the data scientists, like there are people like me who are having the same issues. Like, so being in a community, being able to share the problems that you're facing, being able to share each of the small success or each of like every success is important. Every time you release a video that is a success for you. So every each and every small thing is a success and each and every small success calls for amazing celebrations. So it is what we make out of our life that matters and it is our happiness that is the most important. So be it our work, you have to find ways in order to make happiness out of the work that you are doing. So I feel that is an amazing, uh, that is the answer to uh, your question yeah. for happiness in, the, in this career. This career is something which uh, everybody is desiring now. It's not about uh, whether a mathematician, whether a statistician, even biologists are in computation today. Uh, True. Whether it's uh, NVIDIA coming out with uh, Parabricks, which is a software for bioinformatics people developed mm-hmm. by the computer science graduate students or with a team of bioinformatics, all these guys. Mm-hmm. There is something called as an approach which actually matters. Every problem statement needs to have a proper approach. You know, as an intern, you know, give me, give your view as an intern. Don't worry. It's not about whether you are experienced 10 years or 20 years, but yet yeah. your approach might give a little bit more insights on solving problem in the future. I just want to ask you this one question of what's your approach in solving any problem statement? And what do you feel about the data sets which are coming these days? Because I interviewed with one of the person Cloudera, Akash J, I'll link, mm-hmm. I'll put that in the description there or in the video. You know, he literally gave a lot and lot of insights on mm-hmm. how blockchain was there during 2017, how big data was there, and now how did he choose big data because of problem statements available? And what do you feel mm-hmm. about the data set today? My two questions need to be answered with your <laughs> views. Okay, so the problem statement. So when I'm, I'm, as you told, tell in terms of uh, as an intern experience, I have to say that is uh, defining the problem statement is the most like problem statement won't be available right away. 
because whenever a company is approaching you uh, or the data science firm the company won't have any idea the company would be like see uh, see mr x i am uh, our company is facing this uh, major loss we have no idea about what our uh, you know what which area that we are having the problem in and which area we need to develop i need uh, i need your company in order uh, i need your i need your firm to find the solution for us so this this will be the most common way in which any company would approach a data science firm so it is the duty of the data scientists in order to define a proper problem statement that we have to work on because if the problem statement is wrong then there is and if we start working on that that would be a waste of a lot of us so whenever we whenever i say whenever if i if you ask me about my approach towards a uh, like a problem statement i would be like talk a lot with the stakeholders that are uh, approaching you so the stakeholders might not have any idea about what the problem is but if you ask the most relevant questions uh, uh, to the stakeholders about what uh, what and all uh, you know are you right uh, you know involved in what and all areas are you involved in right now which area do you think uh, is needs a lot of improvement when you ask a lot of uh, questions a right of, a lot of right questions to the stakeholders and then you see the data that you provide most of the times i uh, you know i've heard that the data uh, in the real real time data you know it doesn't add you know the real time data is not clean as we expect it to be and uh, more, a lot of time goes into data cleaning and uh, once we get the data clean only then we can go into uh, understanding if it provides any insight we try to solve whenever we try to understand uh, anything from the data we will we will need to understand it based on the problem statement that we have defined so whenever we are trying to define a problem statement we have to look at all the attributes that is involved uh, that is involved in um, defining the problem statement or defining the you know the profit of the company maybe the company might be involved in textiles some company might be involved in e-commerce or different areas the company might be involved in and within that we have a lot of variables so we have to see which and all variables as uh, i told you about the parameters before we have to see which and all variables and parameters are especially important in defining the success of a particular company and then we need to then understand which parameter is the most important that will affect the uh, company right now and the next thing that i would like to uh, say is that when we are defining the parameters it is important to understand which parameter goes where so sometimes uh, most of the uh, or most of the times whenever we are looking at a data set we don't know what a certain variables mean so that is where you ask your stakeholders what does these what are, what are these variables uh, what do these variables mean what what value do you think this variable adds and all these you know you have to ask the right questions you have to talk to them and you have to understand what they are expecting out of uh, like what they are expecting out of the uh, data science firm to provide them so only after you know talking to the stakeholders and not only the company the stakeholders of a particular company if it is a shoe company the the owner of the shoe shop or the be bata the own owner of bata the people who are involved in the production then the people who are involved in the marketing all of these are stakeholders any person who is involved with with the company with the sales of the company everyone are stakeholders so you need to ask you need to talk to all the stakeholders and understand what the problem is and then define the problem statement and then start working on them so i feel uh, you know defining the right problem statement matters a lot when it comes to solving real world problems yeah that's what we lack you know there are developer mm-hmm. evangelists uh, there are manage data science managers there mm-hmm. are people who are managing the team of data scientists everybody mm-hmm. comes into the play but that right question is really going to make a humongous change i'm not joking because there there are flutter developers who are thinking that okay dart in some or the other way is going to do their work but there are mm-hmm. flaws in the apis which you are using in the back end also 
you have to mm-hmm. make sure that you are open for the questions and you are open for it but yet you know as an mathematician right you know the the behavior and the and the way you behave in order to solve a problem actually differs you know it's not about uh, it's like john gotti you know one of the mob boss of uh-huh. eras you know probably 20 30 years before he had the look and mannerism of hollywood but he never fit the profile of a mob boss kind of right mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but today when you uh, when you just leave in computer science student just to solve a data science problem he is he he just make sure that he just gives a round of approaches and now comes out with the right approaches but but when i talk to a mathematician right they hit on the point because they are trained like that you know what's that influence as a mathematician or to the mathematics community can do to data science and how has math tailored you in giving such a huge and a humongous and a beautiful decisions as a data scientist what's your view on it hmm. uh i i think when uh, mathematicians uh, and i i don't consider myself to be an expert in mathematics uh, but still whenever we still have an ma- edge of math yes that is there i have an i have an edge for math but uh, whenever we are trying to solve problems in the real time world what the reason why we might give a uh, on point uh, uh, you know on point solutions for uh, data uh, for data science real world problems might be because uh, most of the time we are solving equations or we are solving problems then in different ways we are uh, we have we always think whenever we have a problem to solve we ha- we have a lot of approaches at, as i told you before and we just need to find the best or the optimal solution in order to uh, reach a particular end point so whenever we are trying we try different approaches and whenever i say we it is not just people who are involved in mathematics uh, you know there are a lot of people in data science or in computer science field you know in computer science field too i have to say because most of the time you you just uh, the people try to optimize the programs that they are writing and uh, you know by reducing the complexity the space time complexity and all and uh, and then write the correct program that uses very less complexity even that when you have the same approach in order to solve a data science problem it will provide a lot of value because you will get a solution that can be solved in very less less time or very less um, you know with very less effort so i think the same approach goes to uh, solving any real world problems be it math or a computer student yeah that actually gives that lot of insights as soon as you go to the work it's just like cycling once you start pedaling you will start rolling in and out it's just like mm-hmm. making a move of a devil and making a move of a monster you know devil comes you will never get to know what's its move but yet when a mm-hmm. monster comes you get to know its move but yet there is disruption there devil has it but you will never get to know the steps you know that's how influential work process is all about data science is something huge you can never mm-hmm. know what insights and a person who knows nothing can give you in the field of data science because that's what mm-hmm. data science is all about complexities over complexities true yeah you know and, i think and a... all those uh, and all those complexities these are these complexities can be broken down into very simple concept that is why i always i always whenever we are learning a concept it is very important in order to understand the base concept so we have a lot of complex problems we have a lot of complex issues that we are trying to solve in data science but all those complex issues when we try to go to the root we will be able to understand how to solve them so it is very important in order to break down and come down to the most minimalistic point in order to understand whatever problem that we are trying to solve and it takes a, it takes a lot of time depending upon the complexity of the problem that you are trying to solve yeah, you know it's not about whether you sleep for 100 days and work for a day <laughs> and you get a solution that's also there but yeah. there are yeah. frameworks which are open source there are frameworks which are like uh, apache kafka cloud apache kafka and cloudera is also give, coming out with new new frameworks and lot of things you know 
uh, but there are open source frameworks also for the data science. What do you feel about the frameworks these days in terms of uh, mathematical approaches and how are they tailored in order to give you the right solution? Uh, you know, as a data scientist, when you are working in that field, you don't care about the CPU and GPU cycles which you are rolling in because you will be working on cloud and you will be having a lot of GPUs and TPUs. Yeah, it, it, you know, company pays it and we just use it. But what do you feel mm -hmm. about the frameworks these days? You know, let it be TensorFlow, oh. Pandas, anything. What do you feel about oh, the frameworks these days? Was, I, I don't think I am not, I would be able to answer that question because I, I did like, uh, I did think about that question, but I am not sure if I'll be able to give a proper answer for that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it can be happening, but like, can you answer me about the best pipeline that you have worked in the data science at least? Uh, but still, I, I, I am not sure about what to say for that because I have, I don't, uh, I have not worked on developing a pipeline. Like just when we are doing some G, uh, GCP, when we are trying to develop a, a GCP pipeline, I, I, I had developed, I had did that as part of my, uh, you know, a lab exercise that I did at college. But even even when I'm doing that, I, I did not have much idea of how to develop all these pipelines. So I think I'm not, uh, you know, qualified enough in order to answer that. I think we can just skip that. Skip question. that part. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. You know, when you come to microservices, right? There are ETL pipelines, CLK pipeline, RPC communication mm -hmm. protocols, lot and lot of concepts come into the picture, but yet they are mathematically modeled and all things will be rolling in and out in those microservices. Mm -hmm. I'm the, not asking you. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, there was one one place, uh, there was one sir who kind of asked me that uh, I was interested in internship in developing pipelines and was like, what are these pipelines? And I was like, I had literally no idea of what pipelines are. Then I just, I just Googled it in order to get, a, a, you know, a, a, you know, a very, you know, Vague understanding of, vague yeah, understanding. yeah, vague understanding of pipeline. I'm like, okay, am I going to use that? I, I don't know. I'm not very sure. I think no, we can just it's skip. actually a new way that of is, uh, new hmm. way of engineering. You know, that computer vision has a lot of pipelines involved in uh, your code only. You, you know, it's oh. like a code as architecture. There are a lot of ways in which you are supposed to learn the code itself, not as by adding oh. okay, if else, okay, if else, if else. It's not like that, but there are architectures which are involved to give that reduced complexity for the computation. You know, like uh, before in hand, we, we used to have a lot of things like monolithic service oriented architecture, but now microservices came in and it has actually changed the way in which cloud computing is actually. Why you told, yeah. uh, when you told about that concepts keep rolling, right? When LinkedIn was published as a PubSub, it had a lot of issues, mm -hmm. right? So now, there is a uh, scientist called as Neha Karkadi. She came Narka, Narkadi. Neha Narkadi. She came with an Kafka and she's now doing the Confluent Kafka also. There is also certification mm -hmm. for Confluent Kafka, which Bauk Chawla is one of the LinkedIn. I can post the LinkedIn and everything. They're, they are mm -hmm. giving out amazing pipelines for this problem statement. There is something called mm -hmm. as batch processing everything. There are a lot mm -hmm. of things out there. But as a mathematician, right? Let, let's just forget all those questions. Let's just forget everything. As a mathematician, do you really think so this technology is good enough to do the number crunching of this era? Means data is in 400 terabytes. When you when you look at Vishal Punjabi's wedding videos, you know, I'm more into, I'm more into photography and kind of thing, right? So I follow a lot of people around. My Twitter is filled with data scientists and uh, all these passionate people. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I just want your view. Is technology really good enough to do number crunching? Because we have seen Pentium rolling in and out of the technology before, but yet there is Xeon processor, i9 processor, there is a lot of parallel architectures, everything is coming True. up. As a mm -hmm. mathematician, I want your view on this question. True. Very, that is actually a very good question because uh, data scientists are so much in demand today because we have an up the amount of data. We have a lot of data. It is said that uh, in social media today, I recently read that, that in social media today, uh, by 2020, that is right now, by 2020, every single person would be generating 1.7 megabytes of data every second. 
So yeah. in a form yeah. of sensors, in a form of anything. Yeah. Can- anything. So we have a lot, a lot of data today and uh, technologies and the real power that the like data like it can be different kind of data the audio data the number numerical data the text data any data the or any kind of data that we are having and the 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 data alone cannot provide any value so we need people with skills and we need people amazingly skilled people who can develop the technology in order to you know extract the values and insights from these uh, from these data that is already available to us so i think so i think right now we have a lot of technologies that are available as you told and i think uh, we have to we we there are a lot of data that uh, that are not used uh, i i think i've heard about um, you know i i heard a seminar that about my friend about uh, uh, is there something called black data or yeah uh, yeah there is something called black data and there are also optimization codes which are available mm-hmm. lot of things yeah. lot of things Mm-hmm. So, so these kinds of data they are uh, they have they have a lot of privacy issues but still we have a lot of data that are not optimally utilized so i think uh, you know in a mathematical perspective if you are asking me already a lot of technologies has been developed uh, in order to you know find value you find value for the data that is already available but i think personally that even more technology can be developed in order to in order to you know extract the valuable information that uh, the data can provide because we have you know uh, the the problem of privacy also becomes a big question when we are trying to use data machine learning security mhm yeah i i'm not uh, yeah you know but... machine learning privacy is there mhm yeah, yeah. there are a lot that, of that things. is there mhm true and at the same time uh, when we are trying to there is a very big ethical part on uh, privacy uh, issues when it comes to so, uh, you know using data of a particular person but i i feel that data can be used as an advantage as a very because data i've heard that data is a new oil and it is a new gold and uh, all these kinds of phrases because it can provide a lot of value to what we are trying to uh, you know solve or what we are trying to uh, what uh, any business uh, you know with data we can uh, have we can get, get a solution for what is the best thing that people want today so every all of those simple questions can give an answer which can provide a scope for the building of a particular startup or building of a company depending upon the needs of the people so if you know most of the, the best custom the best uh, companies or the companies that grow a lot are customer centric companies the companies that make the life of the people much more easier they tend to be more successful so i think data has a big uh, big role or to play in that part so i think that's there thank you tina for this amazing podcast i think this is the longest podcast which i have ever done that's for sure yeah, you know you know because uh, i think uh, nobody uh, can also try to demystify a lot of things with lot of insights filled in it we can keep talking for a day but never have yeah. a value in it but yet this one and a half hour or one hour 40 minutes probably i don't know how much but yet i'll edit it and i'll just post it online you yeah. know i think the best one and a half hour of my life probably you know thank you even even i too had amazing like when you were talking about pipelines i had amazing those were concepts that i had to work on and uh, you gave me so much you know you know clarity and you told about neha i uh, i narkade sorry ha narkade neha yeah. narkade yeah she was so i had like i got to have you know gain a lot of knowledge talking to you also and thank you very much for inviting me to talk in your uh, you know in your channel podcast in podcast. this podcast yes in this podcast i'm very much honored that you asked me and uh, thank you very much so much tina uh, 